I did combine uh, slide number four and five in your e-learning. Basically, I do have separate uh, slide four and five, but basically they are uh, related uh, to uh, WBS. Okay. Slide number four is just a few examples of the construction activities. I think uh, maybe some of you are basically are familiar with, but in that is for normal construction anyway. Okay. Now let's go into this thing. Before uh, yesterday, we mentioned about uh, WBS a lot. Why do we need WBS? WBS is basically is a starting point. Okay, if you want to develop any project scheduling, uh, you do not know uh, where to start. Start with developing WBS. That could be the, the first thing first. Organizing the project, um, can you? We can basically divide the project using WBS work breakdown structure, um, and then also by grouping them into appropriate group. Okay, uh, eventually. They're all about the same, okay? Uh, the issue is that you want to split, let's say, a building. You have a contract uh, to build a school project. So school project by itself is, is, is just a, a one or the whole uh, project development. But then what inside those kind of development? There could be many. Uh, now you start, uh, you, you want to basically divide them into a smaller portion. So that is what WBS is all about. And for sure, you normally would group them into a particular section, zone, building, etc. So WBS is a process of dividing the project tasks into smaller manageable component for planning purposes. And normally, uh, why do we divide into a smaller portion? Because we want to attach some kind of quantity. Because one we know the, uh, the how much quantity uh, related to the portion of work that we want to do it is very easy for us to measure in terms of progress or performance that's it otherwise it is very difficult okay if you cannot measure something then it, you basically cannot um, cannot manage so everything basically need some kind of measurement so WBS uh, is organizational tool for complex project, first step in creating schedule, useful for defining the scope of work. Okay, if you do not know uh, what to do with regard to certain activities, so WBS will tell us, okay, inside uh, this section or this portion or this area, there could be, I don't know, 100 activities. And then we understand, okay, th those are the things that we need to basically uh, complete and then uh, uh, dividing into smaller and smaller meaning to say sub and sub and sub and sub that's what the smaller and smaller portion mean okay upper two or three level well then the issue when you want to split uh, how many level that you want to split well there is no um, uh, base there is no what we call a very clear uh, re regular requirement to what extent you want to split but as i mentioned if you give more detail then at the end of the day you will make like, your life difficult because when you want to update the schedule you need all the information for instance form work you want to construct form work uh, let's say you want to uh, to cast a floor Floor basically consists of formwork, rebar, and then concrete. Sometimes you can split into that uh, three uh, uh, main work there, but sometimes you just simply mention concreting floor. So those things are basically related. Formwork, rebar, and concreting is basically inclusive of concrete, uh, uh, constructing the floor. Uh, that could be one possibility. You can split or even you can uh, put uh, them together as one item. Okay, for instance, in any development, there could be many buildings inside uh, those area, and then you can basically divide according to the building because each of the building you might have different contractor or you might have different uh, people in charge. 
so it is easier you split them into a, a section practical consider consideration for wbs or grouping uh, take a look at the area of responsibility who is going to be in charge category of work distinct structural element location of work bq as i mentioned jkr normally would like you to have scheduling according to bq because for them it is very easy to track the payment okay and then accounting system area of responsibility who is basically in charge in a big 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 area you could have um, a different manager different project manager okay in klia for instance when they started the first klia project they do have manager after manager looking after for instance control tower alone uh, maintenance building cargo building etc etc so you just imagine uh, they need to divide according to uh, personnel subcontractor uh, department or section category of build, uh, category of work uh, in the project development they could be building road and pavement uh, water supply system mechanical electrical substructure earthwork and even some uh, of the uh, big big project high-rise building uh, substructure work are being given to different uh, contractor then after they completed then being uh, hand over to the uh, superstructure contractor you see those kind of thing this thing structural element uh, in construction for instance uh, in building, we do have footing, ground beam, columns, and then uh, a different floor column, roof beam, roof truss, uh, ground, ground floor slab, first floor slab, second floor slab, etc. etc. That is what uh, we mean by structural element in the building. And normally in Malaysia, uh, we build things uh, using what we call uh, structure for structural element. We do not use so much on the brick wall. Brick wall normally do not have any uh, columns or uh, so in Malaysia, most of the time we go for the structure. And then location of work, change. If we, uh, you are build, we are building a um, highway, road, um, drainage or very long, long culvert, uh, severage part, a system pipeline so we can have this kind of uh, uh, marking okay and then we divide according to each other change for instance maybe different contractor will uh, will uh, handle a certain portion of the change okay there will be and then uh, bq if you look at any tender document normally the BQ section will be divided in, for instance, preliminary. Preliminary is the one that I relate to uh, indirect costs. So remember, total construction costs consists of indirect costs plus direct costs. Indirect costs is normally uh, people put in preliminaries. Preliminaries is basically the overhead costs, the, the, the cost related to managing the construction project it is not uh, the cost to build the the real building that uh, being said in the uh, tender document con or contract document but some of the money need uh, are needed basically to manage a project okay and then uh, earthwork uh, section substructure and then uh, superstructure consists of building frame floor roof etc etc so it basically depends on type of the uh, uh, project, but normally uh, BQ are being divided into these kind of things because normally our BQ we follow a standard method of measurement being developed by a quantity surveyor uh, professional body. Okay, clear uh, practical way to of developing WBS clearly clearly define our requirements such as to facilitate the contract administration process, especially with regard to tracking the payment system. Uh, some of the company organization they do have accounting system in other country. Uh, every uh, quantity 
they do have uh, some kind of coding system so they can basically trace very easily okay they can even group according to certain uh, coding and then uh, they can just very quickly go to uh, see what are the things uh, under that kind of category to facilitate monitoring or work progress um, normally, we are going to arrange uh, the um, scheduling according to first thing first. What are the first thing to come so that um, we can basically uh, trace according to the timeline. It is much easier that way. Okay. To support the flexibility in report generation, of course, uh, once you group uh, those things in a proper and uh, sequential, sequ sequential manner it is uh, um, much easy when you want to print a report so everything uh, within a certain time frame so all the related activity that you are doing uh, in the past one month for instance will be seen on the screen easily okay that is the purpose of organizing things okay in terms of uh, what we call uh, this is numbering okay if you we are using microsoft project automatically under the wbs it, they will basically assign some kind of numbering but it is up to us to basically organize later on when we go into microsoft project uh, demonstration i will show you how we uh, once we input the list of activity, then the next step basically is to organize our project. Organize our project so that uh, we can attach uh, this kind of numbering. This is just example. Okay, uh, certain uh, organization do come up with certain certain uh, code, for instance, and uh, those kind of uh, figure mean something. They already have. It is like. Um, it is like our uh, code for this subject, MKAB2213. There are meaning behind those kind of uh, uh, figure, actually. Okay, If you understand, it could be related to department uh, and then uh, faculty, etc. Grouping is a process of organizing the project activity into smaller bands so that it, it, we can easily uh, control once we understand the scope of work and the quantity of the portion that we basically divide, then basically we can uh, manage easily. Okay, this is an example of uh, printout. I think this is from uh, Primavera. Okay, example. Primavera normally looks like this, the interface. And uh, look at the uh, activity ID. They do have uh, this ID and normally this kind of ID uh, correspond to the code in us for instance everything basically they already have code they have a very thick book almost all activity can be divided into this kind of a code so when they make uh, things like that so everybody can uh, basically uh, follow the same kind of concept uh, so that uh, in the contract document in the uh, bq in the scheduling, people basically understand when we mention about certain certain code, what basically work related to that particular uh, uh, code. So coding system for WBS using numbering system, using alphabet, combination of both. Uh, USA means guide. Uh, this is the book that I mentioned that consists of those kind of coding plus the productivity rate. As I mentioned to you, we in Malaysia so far we I have not seen any uh, any similar books as in US. So that's why when we do want we want to do scheduling, it is kind of difficult because we do not have the one's reference guide. Okay, for the BQ I mentioned to you, we already have standard method of measurement and blah blah blah. Uh, that is good, but for this. Uh, scheduling we are yet to see I know a certain individual based on PhD master project do develop but uh, because of the issue it is not comprehensive so it cannot be made as a uh, guideline anyway 
Okay, example of WBS. So I just pick up a few examples. Okay. Uh, the issue is that I do not know your field. If you are into different field, then basically you have to come up with, with the uh, WBS based on what could be the activity, uh, the project activity related to your uh, field or your career. Okay, only you know those things. Okay, but the one that I can give is basically related to construction. Okay, let's take a look at this WBS. Okay, WBS for a warehouse project that consists of a few things site preparation, foundation work. Uh, this is uh, this WBS we divide according to uh, uh, what we call uh, major uh, construction activities. Normally, construction activity will start with site preparation foundation or substructure and the structure work and then uh, system could be m and e plumbing heating ventilation etc etc and then finishing if we do not know how to develop any uh, wbs for construction for instance we can just basically use the same kind of generic terminology here because everything basically uh, fall into the same kind of category so in um, in wbs uh, Microsoft Project, for instance, or even Primavera, this is what we call level one. Level one. This one, level one. And this item is basically one, two, three, four, five, for instance. Okay. And then site preparation, uh, there is a sub subcategory. Uh, this is what we call level two. And because it is under survey is under one, so uh, WBS coding would be auto generated in Microsoft Project, for instance, will be 1.1. 1 .1. This is 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.4. So this is like a chapter and subtopic in a book, for instance, or in even in your thesis that you are going to produce in the next uh, year, for instance. This is the concept. And then uh, this one is level three, level three. Because it, uh, this uh, site boundary fall under survey. So the uh, number would be 1.1.1. .1. This one is 1.1.2, 1.1.3, 1.1.4. One if for instance, under site boundary, we do have a few uh, uh, the sub activity this is level four and then it will be 1.1 1 .1, oh sorry 1.1.1 1 .1 .1. okay you see four level uh, this is what wbs is all about the issue is that in uh, graphic terms uh, normally for the uh, the initial planning if we want to develop WBS, we are going to put on a big, uh, our whiteboard or blackboard or whatever, and sometime uh, get together all the key uh, key person who are well versed about the project or have uh, some kind of uh, previous experience, and then do kind of brainstorming, and then put the, uh, the WBS uh, uh, thinking in, on, on, the, on the wall there using the stick pack, okay? the yellow stick pad. So whoever remember about certain activity related to certain thing, just write down and then they start sticking uh, on the wall. And at the end of the day, you will get the overall picture. Why using the stick pad so that you can move things around easily? Okay, that could be uh, initial uh, WBS uh, discussion. Then you can input them into the computer, a Microsoft project directly, but then you can basically revise again and again. Okay, that will be the first uh, uh, WBS development, which is not going to be easy. Require experience, uh, require discussion. It is not one man show. Okay. So this how how detail how detail is uh, WBS? Is it up to level four, or we can go further? You can go further, but uh, as I mentioned to you. Uh, the further you go, uh, then you will have all the difficulties uh, to get all the information in order to update 
just imagine mm -hmm. if you update them uh, every day uh, without the information you simply cannot update your thing because it will reflect uh, not accurate progress even though maybe you have uh, completed those things but because the information is not there uh, that is basically it will kill you off and then you will uh, let the client uh, uh, opportunity to ask more questions that will be the issue so it is up to you as a planner or whoever doing this thing uh, to what extent you want to basically uh, go to the detail okay uh, this is another example on wbs uh, example start with project setup feasibility study project design project initiation that lead to the implementation and then uh, the implementation is basically the uh, the real construction uh, phase that consists of set preparation again you see groundwork structure uh, roof work electrical and plumbing uh, uh, finishing in terms of interior exterior etc etc and then lastly is basically the uh, project ending and over okay um, this is this might uh, because sometimes we wanted to show in terms of the um, the overall but then it might not fit into the uh, poster or paper but you can have another poster that basically spell out what could be the detail with regard to certain certain uh, item if you want okay uh, this is an example of uh, external work only external work alone okay external work consists of uh, may, maybe uh, pondok penawal is there architectural uh, and then uh, road work drainage sewerage water reticulation, rainwater harvesting, and etc. etc. That is another example. Okay, this is uh, WBS for uh, office building. Okay, uh, start with a site clearance, filing work, uh, external work is there, a building is here because it is uh, much more detailed. Here. And then uh, if we look at this thing, these are the real uh, construction activity, the real one. The rest are basically, uh, testing could be included as well here. The rest, uh, the rest uh, especially this one, it is up to the, uh, sometime in a, in a contract, government contract for instance, they basically, would like to include uh, almost everything uh, inclus inclusive of preliminary but for me normally WBS would basically reflect the work that you need to basically construct that is the thing that you schedule if you look at the pre preliminary if the project is run running for two years then basically how are you going to uh, Put the length of the activity you will you, you will put the length of activity equivalent to two years which basically is not it's not that accurate okay so that is the issue if people can understand that would be better but okay prime prime cost and provisional cost is is the same thing it is inclusive here uh for me if i am the one doing the scheduling i would like to uh, exclude this thing this thing is I should exclude. I only cover uh, the activity, only cover the real thing that we are going to basically uh, uh, construct. Okay, that is the real scheduling is all about. And that is the purpose of scheduling anyway. All right. This is example of Banglo. Okay, Banglo project consists of uh, site clearing. Site clearing also could have many, many sub activity and then uh, preliminary works uh, fabricating work substructure etc etc and substructure could be a lot more than superstructure so this is just example rcc dam uh, this is a dam construction for instance even whatever project you can always divide into uh, the uh, small smaller portion so that you can easily uh, track uh, their progress 
All right. This is a double story. Uh, I think double story housing, typical housing project. Okay. Instead of using a WBS that looks like this. Okay. Look like this. Maybe it is much easier to come up with this kind of drawing. Uh, this kind of drawing is very good. You start with a setting out and then go into excavation, putting, stamp, backfilling. Backfilling consists of a few things, for instance, ground beam, ground uh, floor, and then sanitary, ground floor column, and then it goes into first floor, uh, first floor slab, column, etc., etc. So things are uh, being drawn, something like this, which basically interrelated. Why basically we develop something like this? There is one purpose uh, here. Task. See, in Microsoft Project, uh, there are not many columns that you need to input anyway. Actually, the first column that you need to input is here, task column. Uh, second would be a predecessor, and then you need to input duration. And then the last one, you will input resources. If you want to input resources name. You see, one, two, three, four columns. Uh, but then uh, this uh, task you need to organize into WBS. So I would say there is another column, another column, WBS. So overall, it is a five column, five columns only that's it it's not much anyway okay so you input uh, the task uh, all these tasks is basically based on this mapping this mapping and interconnected activity if you can have these kind of things in your project for for instance this is a double story housing project the, the all the housing basically look the same so it is repetitive in, nat in nature anyway. Okay, once you understand these are the activity that need to be uh, to be constructed, uh, then you list out the activity. These are the listing. Okay, based on this uh, concept, and then predecessor. Predecessor is the one that you need to take a look at the connection between uh, one activity and another in terms of uh, which activity come first, which activity come after that, which activity can be, uh, you can take a look at this. This is what we call lag, L-A-G. And then some of the activities start to start, you see, different uh, different kind of relationship that we use. This also lag. And the rest are basically finished to start relationship. The one that basically doesn't have any other indicator than SS uh, whatnot, meaning to say it is finished to start a uh, relationship. So finished to start a relationship is very common uh, type of relationship. And it is the easiest one. If you do not know how to use other kind of relationship, then basically simply use uh, finished to start. But then in housing project, they might they might have a few uh, crew or gang working on uh, uh, different uh, workflow. So, uh, so the completion might not take uh, longer because they use different team. Okay, that is basically uh, the purpose why we develop WBS. So the only reason is in order to come up with the task. We do not to, we do not want to miss out. Uh, some important tasks. As I mentioned, uh, in uh, many, many constructions, some of the things that need to be constructed are missing. Even very common window are missing, door are missing, balcony even missing. Uh, many opening in the floor, for instance, are missing. Staircase also missing because uh, sometimes they forget to include this in the scheduling. Okay, this is another example of uh, WBS for uh, school, okay? School project, one floor school project. Okay, the overall looks very small, but then if we zoom in into uh, IBS, uh, IBS school building, 
consist of preliminary item, uh, set clearance, demolition. It might consist demolition according to uh, because this uh, project basically is the upgrade of the existing old building, building work, external testing, commissioning, and handover. And then if we zoom into uh, uh, set clearance, then you get more uh, activity. And you, you can take a look at this numbering. Uh, this numbering basically will be uh, will will be put into our WBS and uh, no, this Microsoft project. And at the end of the day, the one that we see on the poster here will be similar in the Microsoft project. Okay. And then uh, building work ground slab consists of many many sub activity. For instance. And this one is until the four level, as uh, some of you might ask. Okay, and then building work consists of frame installation because IBS, roofing work, wall work, etc. And then M and E. Okay, and what else? Finishing, external work. Okay, and then uh, testing and commissioning, the last portion of the project. Okay. All right. So this is another example uh, developed my my uh, master student last time. Um, the reason why we de uh, we developed this uh, WBS is not for the planning purposes. Actually, it was meant for uh, master project. Uh, or in your case, uh, project management. We do not call it master project. We call it capstone. Okay, it is similar to uh, uh, to thesis anyway. Okay. So we developed this WBS for this building, uh, twin tower, uh, what we call academic suite, uh, in uh, Mount Austin, Johor Bahru, the real project. What happened is that uh, the student wanted to, to, to estimate what could be the uh, safety cost. Oftentimes, in a real project, safety cost is being put in the contract doc document only marginally very minimum very low which is does not correspond to the good safety practice okay so uh, our master project so our student master project last time was trying to develop if for instance if we want to manage safety properly what could be the project throughout the entire construction uh, process or activity ah, in order to do that we need to come up with WBS first, understanding what could be the activities involved. From that activities, then only we can identify uh, that particular activity will require some kind of uh, safety feature that eventually will generate some kind of cost. Then we add up uh, uh, the whole cost. So we will get a uh, portion of cost, which uh, should be around how many percentage of the content uh, the the uh, amount of the contract and that could be uh, much more reasonable compared to the one being allocated in the initial contract but this is just an uh, academic exercise anyway okay now uh, academic seat project consists of uh, based on the contract document for instance we can divide into a few uh, what we call uh, major category and then uh, for builder work, for instance, we can divide into basement, main building block A, block B, and even basement work consists of all these kind of things. And then the main building work, uh, this uh, we start with the frame, for instance, floor, wall, staircase, roof, door, window, external finishing, etc., etc. And then uh, the other building are quite similar because it is twin tower. And then even have a swimming pool also, suspended swimming pool, which is a specialized activity. Uh, this could be the uh, the activity that uh, needed to construct this swimming pool. And then some of the external works uh, need to be done, uh, nominated subcontractor work. And then uh, uh, that is uh, what the, the overall uh, WBS is all about for this project. See, that is the example. It is not going to be easy to develop this. Only people who work there, uh, my previous student uh, who did master degree, he was working at the same time at that particular project. 
so he can have the access uh, to all the information so he can develop something like that if normal student would not be able to do this okay lastly in this slide uh, estimating task duration i already mentioned uh, how do we develop uh, task duration is basically based on productivity rate okay productivity rate that is the basis Product, instead of using productivity rate terminology, uh, some people uh, in, in uh, books, for instance, for the machinery, they would call output capacity. So it's the same thing. And then uh, for manpower, labor, they call it labor constant. Uh, so all kind of terminology, but for me, productivity rate. That, that is productivity rate. So how we develop task uh, duration based on uh, experience, meaning to say database is very important. Uh, we need to uh, keep all the record from the previous project. So those kind of information would be helpful. But people would ask if we use the data from the previous project, uh, is it going to basically uh, be very similar to our project? Well, this is what we call planning. Planning do have element of forecasting because planning is something for the future. We do not know. But if we have uh, uh, sufficient data, so our planning would be almost almost accurate. So don't worry about your, your plan is not going to work 100%. That is the nature of the planning. So that's why when we implement the planning, and then we need to basic, basically to, uh, to uh, monitor uh, how much deviation and then we uh, go back and fine tune. There is no such thing as perfect planning. Okay? If you have a good a database, uh, the planning accuracy could be very close to what you, uh, the real situation, but the nature of planning is always like that. That's what we call planning, based on available data and then uh, standard guide uh, USA means. Okay, but this is for US only, as I mentioned, and then computation, calculation, as I already mentioned to you yesterday. Factor that influence the time required to complete a project, man hour required. Maybe uh, initial plan. Uh, certain activity will take around uh, 10 hours, but we never know, okay? Our initial plan is based on uh, maybe skill workers. If we could not have similar skill workers or unskilled workers, that kind of people will normally take longer period of time. Number of gang use, productivity rate uh, database that we have, Capacity of the machine. Sometimes we wish to use a bigger machine, but the available machine is only uh, half the size, for instance. So there could be a lot of factor that influence uh, the implementation might not be similar to what we plan. Okay, example of gang member. Remember, um, certain job can be done by one person a certain job need uh, two or three person or considered as a crew or gang. Certain gang not only require people, also require tools and um, also require some kind of machinery. So it depends. So one gang can be defined as, as a combination of people, tools, and then uh, certain uh, machine are being used. So they, they work as a gang. So we shall consider the productivity based on a gang, not based on individual, okay? So form footing, for instance, in form work uh, construction, so let's say one gang consists of three carpenter, one uh, helper, and the output capacity could be something like that, 375 square foot per, per day, and then uh, excavation uh, using uh, equipment, uh, one laborer, one equipment, and based on uh, capacity of the, of the excavator. Different excavator would uh, would produce different capacity rate. A new one will be different from the old kind of machinery. So uh, everything has to be taken into account. So that's why I mentioned to you, 
the work of planner or scheduler is uh, in order to become very efficient or effective, you need to have uh, a person with a wide range of knowledge because you need to make a lot of reference in order for the schedule to be uh, almost accurate. Let's say we want to excavate, okay? We want to excavate uh, uh, what we call uh, either for culvert, drainage, whatever, okay? Quantity of one, 1,800 cubic meters of soil we need to excavate. Okay, let's say we are using manual labor. Manual, just labor with small tools. Okay, the output capacity rate is basically two uh, cubic meter per man, per, uh, per man day, meaning to say one person. So this is the quantity we can use our equation before P productivity equal Q over T. So if basically we wanted to uh, to know T, T would be equivalent to quantity divided by productivity. So this is the quantity. This is what we call productivity rate. Okay. So in order to ex excavate 1,800 square uh, cubic meter, require 50 days. In some countries uh, where you have a cheap, cheap labor, machinery is much more expensive. They would rather basically hire people compared to machinery. But in Malaysia, I don't think we can afford uh, that because of the, we concern about timing, okay? And it is very difficult to get people even to work at the construction site anyway. Okay. So how about using a 180 level, increase that 180. Of course, we can uh, cut short from 50 until five days. You see, so the duration of the active activity depend pretty much on what we call productivity rate. If the productivity rate is much faster, then for sure we can uh, reduce the number of days. Okay, instead of using manpower, now we replace by machine, for instance. So one excavator can basically use, uh, can, uh, can basically produce output capacity uh, 200 cubic meter in a day, for instance, okay, based on uh, 0 0.2 cubic meter bucket size. So different excavator would have different uh, bucket size capacity. And you see, uh, divide by 240, we can get 7.5 days. And normally in the uh, scheduling, we are going to make an even number and around uh, eight days. So you see, using machinery, even though it might be a little bit expensive, but if you can reduce the uh, time, so those kind, thing, kind of thing will be compensated. All right. Now, instead of using one, why don't we use two? So automatically, it is uh, from eight uh, days previously, for sure, will be reduced to uh, four days. So this is how we basically calculate the duration for each activity. But the issue is that there are a lot of activities. So different activity will require different, uh, uh, different productivity rate. So that's why, uh, even though I mentioned to you before, in Microsoft Project, there are not a lot that you have to input into the uh, software, but the duration you need to predetermine or uh, you need to calculate. And a lot of your time will be spent on calculating all the uh, duration. And resources are related to uh, duration. At the end of the day, once you uh, attach a certain unit rate based on uh, uh, BQ unit rate, or you can get unit rate uh, based on CIDB for construction industry, CIDB or JKR, uh, even though the rate might be a little bit higher, but at least uh, uh, as a reference point. Or if we already have the uh, contract document for sure, that unit rate is the one that we should use so that at the end of the day, uh, the total cost inside our Microsoft project should be tally with 
the cost uh, in your contract document. Okay, from that basically you can uh, uh, trace the progress of uh, financial spending. Okay, so that is uh, what this slide is all about. Just uh, to tell you, uh, first thing first in project scheduling is uh, WBS and how WBS is being developed and then the relationship of WBS uh, and, uh, to the uh, what we call activity duration or task name and etc. All right, okay then. So any questions so far? So we completed on our first uh, topic. Okay, what was that? Sorry, sir. Uh, the factors influence time required to complete the project task. It's not limited to that, right? It, it will be like a long list, whatever factors that we can think of. Uh, right? Oh, yes, you are right. But the one that I relate is basically uh, uh, related to uh, what we call activity, activity duration. Okay, so remember, when uh, the activity duration is based on uh, productivity calculation so the one that i relate is basically the, the, the one that influences the duration of activity for instance the skill of human beings and then um, uh, the machine use but as you mentioned the uh, factor that influence the project overall duration that could be many including the rain including all kind of uh, bureaucracy delay, uh, even material uh, delivery, and then uh, the issue of, uh, as our, mentioned, our friend mentioned, we owe sometime when we already about to start certain work, then we owe is being issued, so we simply have to delay a little bit, okay? So there, are, there could be many, you are right. All right, so-, so sir, sorry, one more question. So the, the, the delay, right, will be um, uh, part of the calculation? Uh, the delay will be part of the calculation. Uh, delay will be part of the calculation. For example, the case that uh, you showed just now, we have case one and two and three, right? Um, basically, if there is any delay that we foresee, then mm -hmm. uh, we consider that as part of the uh, calculation or this is a, just like a happy lane uh, thing? <laughs> Um, that if that kind of delay, okay, we can basically input in our scheduling in such a way that uh, we can put uh, plus plus lag, okay. We when we plus lag. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. when we All update right. our project uh, uh, later on, we we are the one that basically uh, change. Maybe it starts basically with no lag, then we can put lag, or it, we can even change the duration uh, due to the additional uh, delay in uh, certain certain uh, factors. Oh. Yeah, we can do that. Whatever that we anticipate that that might be lagging in one of the activities that we get added on. Uh. Yes, you are right. I see. Okay, okay. Okay. So now we are five minutes before 10. We go for 10 minute breaks. Uh, before we go into our next slide, I think today we are going to to finish much earlier than expected. So I expect uh, we are not going to break for lunch. Okay, so we continue with the second slide uh, and then 10 minute break uh, and then the third slide. And by the fourth slide, for instance, we should finish by, I don't know, maybe two or whatever. So we wrap up the class of the day much earlier. How, how about that? Is it okay with you? Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, okay with that, sir. <laughs> All right. So please take a uh, 10 minute break. So we come back at 10 uh, 10, okay? 10 10, easier that way. <laughs> 